a novice stacker, teaches us a thing or two about stacking. You're not going to want to miss this amazing letter. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. This is an incredible letter. I can't wait to read it, talk about it with you, reflect on some of the things that Novice Stacker says. Okay, Much of what he says, I agree with, but not all of it. Some of it dovetails really nicely with my Yankee stacking strategy. Other things, not so much. But guess what? That's fun. That's the beauty of our incredible community. We all have similar goals, but how we get there differs some. So uh, let me read. This is, by the way, from Omaha, Nebraska. No, no return address. Hmm. <laughs> all right. October 6th. Dear Yankee, when am I going to post a stacking video? Never. Not my thing. <laughs> but your recent top 10 video prompted me to look back upon my early stacking experiences. Yeah, I, I remember that video. Uh, it, it, it must have been thought-provoking for novice. So anyways, um, oh, and he says early stacking experiences. How early is that? Well, my stacking journey began in April. I think April this year. So he hasn't been stacking long. Uh, in a conference call to review the market's first quarter, the gold-hating chief investment officer of my portfolio management firm conceded he was softening his views given our near zero interest environment. The remark prompted me to begin studying precious metals. Well, isn't that an interesting uh, start to his journey? <laughs> the gold-hating CIO. How often do we run into uh, uh, you know, financial advisors that have no clue as to what precious metals are or think they're just rocks? So fascinating that this one was starting to soften and near zero interest rate environment. That is going to continue for a very long time. All right, the first question. All right, so, so here's when we get into the uh, why, who, uh, how, what, when, and where of novice stackings, uh, or novice stackers stacking, if you will. And I'm going to address each of them as he lays them out. The first question was why? Life and career has been good. I'm financially secure with a well-diversified investment mix. My conclusion was that precious metals fit as a non-correlative asset, a hedge against the dollar, and the appeal of beautiful coins. Oh, wow. Where to begin here? Um, Non-correlative asset. You know, that is exactly what it sounds like. It's a, uh, a an asset whose uh, value isn't tied to larger fluctuations in the uh, more traditional markets. Okay? Non-correlative. Uh, a hedge against the dollar. Yes. Yes. In fact, precious metals sometimes can be seen as a way to short the dollar as the dollar goes up. Uh, precious metals tend to go down and vice versa, although we are in a very interesting period right now where both a uh, strong dollar and a strong precious metals market exist. Fascinating. I do think that will change soon. And the appeal of beautiful coins. Okay, so he's he's tipping his hand right here. He's somewhat of a of a, what I call a collector stacker. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about what kind of things he collects in a little bit later. But first, next up, was who? Stacking videos comparing dealers provided names. My detailed spreadsheets indicated who was consistently competitive. I've experimented with four online dealers plus an LCS, local coin shop, which are few and far between in this region. Nebraska, right? You can see right here, flyover country where the buffalo once roamed. Okay, I don't know how many of you watching are from the Midwest. I can imagine Nebraska might be difficult to find uh, a lot of options when it comes to an LCS, but he is obviously uh, being careful here with his spreadsheets. He's, a, he's, a, uh, he's being analytical and looking carefully at the competitive prices uh, of those bullion dealers. Fascinating. Uh, how? How was... 
uh, how was how much to stack? All right, how much? A poster in the comment section of a video joked that the right amount was your age in gold and weight in silver. That actually sounds reasonable. Whoa, age in gold. <laughs> well, well, I guess my uh, 25 troy ounces that make up the Yankee Cannon uh, puts me behind the scale. I'm not 25. <laughs> I'm 54. So yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, weight in silver. Weight in silver. Now I'm, I'm assuming he means pounds, not ounces. So for me, that would mean stacking a silver hoard that weighs 185 pounds. Yes, I weigh 185 pounds. That's 2,000 698 troy ounces. Although he could have meant ounces? I don't know. That would be what? 185 ounces? No, 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 no. It's got he he has to mean he has to mean pounds there. But what do you guys think of that by the way? Your age in gold and weight in silver. Wow. Okay. Uh parallel uh to that is the debate on the ratio of gold to silver. It's confusing because stackers are unclear whether they are citing value or weight. Hmm. I think most are using a weight when they talk about the ratio. But anyways, I could be wrong there. My view is that as we grow older, the stability of gold takes precedence over more volatile silver, similar to how we adjust equity. Uh, slash fixed income ratios as the years go by. This may prompt Yankee apoplexy, but I concluded that a 10 to 1 silver to gold ratio by weight is plenty for my first year of stacking. 10 to 1. <laughs> well, I'm not apoplexic, but that ratio does strike me a bit surprising. I don't know. I think it's a little too heavy on the gold side, 10 to 1. You know, I I, uh, I now stack approximately 400 to 1. 400 ounces of silver to 1 ounce of gold. But hey, to each his own, right? <laughs> I do, however, uh, understand the, uh, the comment here about the equity versus fixed income ratio. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, as I grow older... You know, I'm I'm more focused on um, building my wealth carefully. In fact, I'm actually more concerned about preserving my wealth with precious metals than I am about increasing it with precious metals. Although I do try to. So, anyways, that that resonates with me. Very cool. Uh, what the what? What required a good deal of thought? I decided that a novice stacker should focus on the fundamentals. Yes. Music to my ears. A stack is like a pyramid. A strong foundation comes first. Yes, that's, that's why I started with gold myself and then, then got into silver, right? So absolutely strong foundation. Gold strategy became up north and down under. Eagle for liquidity, buffalo for purity, maple for affordability, kangaroo for design, swan for beauty. Wow. Now, I, <laughs> I can appreciate that uh, gold variety there. That's impressive, okay? But as a prepper stacker, I really don't prioritize design or beauty that much. Oh, I can appreciate good design and good beauty, but that's not what I focus on with my stack. Too much premium for me. And, and as for purity, oh, well, I love the buffalo. Don't get me wrong. Please understand that. One day I will get a one ounce buffalo gold coin. But maples, hmm. maples are affordable, more affordable than the buffalo. And they are just as pure. Okay, that satisfies my need for pure gold. Just fine. That's why I got the uh, uh, maple musket. Quarter ounce of gold. 20 of these. Five ounces. Here's the 25, by the way, ounces of gold right there. Um, yeah, for me, both the uh, uh, American 
uh, gold eagle and the uh, gold maple leaf are sufficient. All right, let's see. Um, in silver, the fundamentals are constitutional and American silver eagles. Yes, bingo. At the premium, I'm sorry, at the Pyramid's Peak, I indulged my childhood coin collector. Okay, see? See, the coin collector comes out, right? I have full sets of the Perth Swan and Emu series, plus the Dragon Phoenix series due to being born in a year of the dragon. Gotta have a little fun. <laughs> well, that's that's awesome. You do. I think it's fantastic to have some fun. I, you know, enjoy a... Uh, silver ice cream cone every so often. Um, and I think it's important to, but but be careful of those premiums. Novice, many times those premiums evaporate as the years go by. But again, it's the tip of his pyramid. I, I'm not going to you know judge him on that. Just, just warn him a little bit. And you can't go wrong with junk and eagles. Okay, but actually, you know, silver maple leaves, they're cheaper, so they're they're a great too, uh, great way to stack when it comes to uh, government minted silver bullion. All right, let's see. Uh, when when was tricky? I have settled into dollar cost averaging, but my instincts said metals were on the move, so I shoved most of my plan 2020 purchases into May, June, July. Spot now exceeds my overall cost, so I've earned back premiums via a rising market. Well, well done, dude. You, you you got in big time during a good time. And I agree with that, by the way, that sometimes, even though you're dollar cost averaging, you look for once in a blue moon type opportunity and you go in hard, okay? I think we're entering a period like that with the election soon. Finally, there is... Yeah, finally is the where. I purchased a cheap decoy safe, which is in plain sight in my house office, a home office, excuse me. It holds my extra airtight so it will rattle if stolen. I love that. <laughs> he throws his extra ones in a throwaway safe, a decoy safe. That's great. The core stack is accessible, but in a location so unexpected, I can't imagine the executor of my estate will find it. I need to put an instruction map in my safe deposit box. <laughs> well, good for you, novice stacker. Okay, I'm a big advocate for hidden safes. And I love the decoy idea. That That's great. <laughs> With the hair tights. Wow. All right. Now, this this second page right here, really, really cool. He, he breaks down some really interesting uh, bullet points. I'm going to fire right through them. And then we'll finish up but you don't want to miss this. Have there been mistakes? Yes, absolutely. Fortunately, not many due to a determination to keep mistakes and frivolity in the less expensive silver. So what I gather from this is uh, uh, novice stacker is not impulsive, right? He obviously has a strategy and he sticks with it. And that reduces his mistakes. And when he does make a few, there were the less expensive stuff, all right? My first gold was a pamp lady for tuna. Attractive lady. But it made me realize I'm a coin guy. It was sold to my LCS at the peak of this year's market. Well, that's great. He, he times this really well. He sold it. But he realized he's a coin guy. Folks, remember that. We are hardwired to see round objects as money, not not bars, okay? Not not so much this. But and don't underestimate that subconscious bias that we have. Coins. I love it. I'm a coin guy too. I was seduced by the panda prior to deciding that swans would be my luxury gold. Okay, wait. Stop. Let, let, let's just stop right there. All right. Luxury gold. Okay, he He's saying a lot there, right? Most of us, just having gold is a luxury. You know, we, we can't comprehend, or a lot of us, I don't think, can comprehend the luxury gold versus the regular gold. But again, I'm not, I'm not faulting him for it. I think that's phenomenal. He can do it. But if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, wait, what? Luxury gold? What? That's out of my reach. I get it. The 30-gram metric weight was annoying. 
Then the pandemic reminded me that I don't like communists. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it was also sold to my LCS for a tidy profit. Well, that's again, great job. I do recommend as a prepper stacker that most people should buy uh, their precious metals from the geographic area that they are from for their stack. Okay, I think that's important. Stay away from a lot of foreign coins. At least that's my my take on it. I purchased the 10-ounce Britannia bar and held it to a 47% profit. Very nice. But it was traded to the LCS for constitutional when I realized the latter was my priority goal. Okay, again, he, you can almost sense him falling in love with some stuff, making a little bit of a mistake maybe in his eyes, picking up a 10-ounce Britannia bar. They are beautiful. He did turn a profit, but that wasn't the core. The core is his constitutional. I considered, but did not act on a gold Britannia. Love the look. But my conclusion was that European gold did not make much sense in American stack. That's my geographic point right there. Although, I have to admit, a gold Britannia, whew, that's another beautiful coin. And I love the, the security features that uh, are coming out in the 2021 Britannias. Really cool. Anyway, I was tempted by pre-1933 gold when my LCS had a good supply at very competitive prices. I concluded it made little sense until I first addressed the basics. Okay, I, I'm sure some of you are going to comment on this. Yankee, uh, you know, you like to stack constitutional silver. Why not constitutional gold? Pre-33 gold. Why are you getting the gold bullion in your Yankee cannon and maple musket? Why? Well, I do like the purity. Uh, I like the bullion. I, I do like the history in uh, pre-1933 uh, gold, but I haven't stacked it. I think at some point I will, but it'll be more of a uh, collector type of move on my part. And so he and I are pretty much in agreement. We are addressing, he's addressing the basics. That's how I approached it as well. I began this journey by studying gold, but my first purchase was ASEs. He went with the Silver Eagles being a little cheap. <laughs> I bought a full tube to lower my per coin cost. That became the long-term plan. A full tube of BU coins for each minted year. Mintage year. All right. If you follow my channel and you know about my journey uh, in stacking a monster box full of American Silver Eagles, you know what I feel about BU coins versus cull or circulated uh, American Silver Eagles. A lot of what I stacked was circulated. I got it at or just over spot <laughs> about a year ago. It was a great uh, opportunity for me before the price shot up. And I don't care about the mintage years. I really don't. I don't want to pay extra for a tube of 1986 American Silver Eagles or 87s or 88s. It doesn't matter to me. Again, novice stacker, have at it, enjoy yourself. But to me, that is a little excessive. Try to get the cheapest American Eagles as you can. All right. If I wanted to add weight, I'd consider 10-ounce RCM bars. But I believe I am best served by adding to my constitutional. And you can feel that, that tug of war, can't you? Oh, I could go with the RCM bar. Oh, no, I better come back with the constitutionals. Or picking up backdate ASCs at the LCS. Yes, backdate especially after, say, 2001, 2002. They tend to be cheaper, but yeah. My continuing struggle is deciding whether fractionals make sense for a guy who can afford full ounces. Now, I think he's talking about gold here, okay? Maples are the better buy, but I plan to limit fractional purchases to the American Gold Eagle. Hmm. Now, I did mention this before. I, you know, with my maple musket, I wanted my, you know, 24 karat gold. I still think that I'm, I'm glad with my fractionals being uh, uh, maples. They are cheaper, as he says, and I, I like that. But if he can afford full ounces, hmm, yeah, that's pretty good. The adventure part of my stacking has been watching for backdate kangaroos at my LCS. Doing so scored me several pre-kangaroo nuggets. Good for you. Again, collector stacker coming through. 
He is enjoying the adventure. I overshot my 2020 budget to play catch up and could afford to do so due to a big tax refund. Good for you. Next year is a fairly specific shopping list. After the experimenting and learning, I have sketched out a 10 year plan for getting to that age in gold goal. Wow. I wonder how old he is. Hmm. A 10 year plan? Well, that's a lot of gold he's going for. While I have made some sales, do trim holdings to the core strategy. I am an accumulator, not a flipper. Well, yes, I can sense that. In my book right now, actually, as I read on here, uh, it'll come more clear. I think he's about a 60% uh, prepper stacker and 40% collector stacker and not a flipper stacker. All right. Unlike some, I don't envision a Mad Max apocalypse. Well, dude, <laughs> I'm a prepper stacker and I don't envision a Mad Max apocalypse. I mean, that's almost a straw man argument. I don't think we're going to be roaming around, you know, searching for water and in, in these weird outfits and, and, you know, like, you know, the apocalypse uh, end of time. It, it could happen. I, I don't see that. That's pretty extreme, pretty wild, uh, Hollywoodish. But I do anticipate we will borrow until we can't, then become Argentina del Norte, or in my opinion, Venezuela <laughs> del Norte. Tough times for a population not as tough as my grandparents and parents who lived through the Great Depression. My grandparents, absolutely, they were tough. Guys, I think we're facing the Greater Depression. And remember, these people back then, they were not only tough, but they saved. They worked hard. They didn't have the debt that we do. And in fact, their depression was deflationary. That meant that while they lost their jobs and times were tough and very hard, the price of things came down. I think we're headed towards an inflationary disaster, a stagflationary uh, scenario where we will lose jobs. Things will go horribly bad we will basically go bankrupt and it will be inflationary. Prices will go up. It's going to be a horrendous time. It will be Mad Max in that sense, but it will be the worst we have ever seen in our country's history. I pray I'm wrong. I'm not hoping for that, but I'm preparing for it. I expect to see retail stores offering discounts for paying with silver. Yes, absolutely. That's yes, we will actually use silver, I believe, as a means of exchange, just as some now offer discounts for cash over credit. The role of gold is more likely that of a grub stake for rebuilding wealth on the other side of a crisis. I actually stack as a prepper stacker silver and gold for the other side of the crisis as we recover and it is seen as real money. So Great words there. Deeply uh, agree with what he's saying here. At heart, I'm an optimist. That's because I have gone through life considering the what ifs and have always had a plan B. Yeah, I can tell his. that's where I get the prepper stacker piece of his uh, uh, stacking approach. Life one day at a time is probably a better formula for happiness. But when the big bad wolf huffs and puffs, I don't want to be in the house of straw. <laughs> well said. You know, I love that, that he's an optimist. Uh, let me just say, ultimately, because of my faith, I'm an optimist. I know whose hands I'm being held, and I know my ultimate destiny. So in a broad sense of the word, I am an optimist. But between then and now, I'm a realist. And I think he is too. He's got a lot of plan B's and in, in other types of preparatory uh, steps going on here. Yeah, he's a realist. <laughs> if this gives you ideas for future Yankee videos, great. As they say, originality is the art of concealing your sources. Well, I'm not concealing this source. I'm shouting you out, uh, <laughs> novice sacker, and thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that you love my channel. Novice sacker, I loved this note. I got a lot out of it, and I appreciate 
the time it took for you to put it together. Thank you for sharing it with me. I hope you got a lot out of it too. Please leave a comment down there. There's a lot to comment on this uh, letter and on this video. Let me know what you think. Well, thank you so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate it and I hope your day is a-okay.